All right, if you've been uh, playing along at home, you would have known that I've received a few of these lately, and I have, do have a specific project in mind. I've got a few actually, but the first one is going to be get some sort of uh, mesh, Wi-Fi mesh over the property so I can then do some monitoring and, and maybe even uh, do some controlling. And I thought, um, well, for a couple of reasons, the ESP01S might be the way to go. Theoretically, it's got one megabyte of RAM on there. It's only got a couple of IOs, but you only need a couple for monitoring and for controlling, so um, that shouldn't be such a big issue. And uh, I've got these little adapters here as well, which have come in. And uh, what I'm going to do is take out the main uh, memory or the flash chip here, uh, which is one megabyte, and replace it with one of these guys, which also came in in a recent mailbag, um, which um, is supposedly has got four megabytes. First thing to do is actually see if this has got one megabyte on it. So we will do um, you know, a couple of uh, experiments on that. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and, uh, and replace this and do those again and see what the difference is. Right, so this is the check flash config sketch which comes with the ESP8266 libraries and core. All I've done really is change the serial uh, speed here and also the delay. It's compiled fine. Um, so let's just make sure we're in programming mode. And we are. I'm going to plug the ESP01S in. And that theoretically has a memory of one megabyte. Uh, now this is reporting one megabyte here, auto detected, so that's a good sign. I don't know that we really need to do anything more than that. We could use the ESP tool for this, in fact, I think we will. But also be interested to know what comes out of the serial monitor. All right, that seems fine. So now let's get that serial monitor up and running. Uh, 9600 is good. Not sure anything will come out until I switch over to UART mode, so I'll pull the ESP01 out change it to UART mode, push it back in again, and let's see what's reported. Uh, it takes a while to boot, I guess. Oh, here we go. Uh, so it's looking at, yeah, one, well, uh, one, zero, four, eight, five, seven, six bytes. So as expected for an ESP01S. All right, let's have a look at the ESP um, tool and see if we can get a similar report because it should also tell us what the flash size is and uh, and then we might do some brain surgery on this thing. Okay so I'm just going to use the ESP tool here and um, you can specify a speed here but I'll just go with the default to see how it goes and basically what I'm doing is polling uh, serial and seeing what the flash ID is so let's try that. Uh, yep, it's made a detection, and we have a detected flash size of one megabyte. All right, that all seems good. Uh, it's surgery time. All right, so we have the soldering iron on and uh, hot air gun as well, and we've got the fan going in the background, which is annoying, so I'll use the, uh, the magic of audacity, I think, to uh, reduce that noise reduction on. All right, good. Now, uh, so here is our old chip, and yes, it is one meg apparently, so I'm just going to desolder that using the hot air gun. So let's do that. That's the first thing. And, uh, and then we'll put this guy on in the same orientation, and uh, hopefully that will, uh, that will help as well. I'll just crank up the hot air to around the 300-ish mark and, uh, and we'll see how that goes. So uh, some of this may be on fast forward. So um, if, uh, if it gets a bit boring, but we'll see how it goes. All right. So my usual thing to do, and this is actually remarkably easy, but I just put some hot air either side and then when I see some stippling, I guess you could call it, whatever the pattern is, evidence of melting anyway, then I just get my tweezers in there and yank it off without hopefully taking the pads with it. Just 
just a bit of gentle upward pressure. Yeah, getting pretty close now. There it goes. A little bit of hot air there to make those pads um, a bit easier to deal with. All right, so that's the hot air done. And then what I'll do is I've got the soldering iron in there as well. Might just put a little bit of flux on there. Um, just might help with re-soldering the new bit. So, oh, that's a bit hard to open. Right, there we go. I've got some toothpicks, which helps. So a little bit of flux. This will hold its heat for some time too, so not a good idea straight after doing the hot air work to uh, to touch it. So you'll see that I've still got it sitting a fair bit above there. All right, that looks good. Uh, so now I'm just getting a bit of a stable platform to do that soldering, so it should have a, a um, there we go, yeah it's cooled down a bit, we should have a breadboard here to just pop that in, just use it in the same orientation, uh, you can see there that uh, this has got the the mark on it for the pin. This is a larger chip, but it should still fit pretty comfortably there. Yeah, it does. That's nice. And then all we need to do is to solder one pad. I might put a bit more solder on that pad. Oh. Nothing like being Mr. Clumsy when you're doing close work. It's a nice big pad of solder. You can fold these pins underneath if you want. I have done that before, but this one should be fine. Looks good. Check that. I think we're good to go. Right. So I've plugged the um, the patient in, and uh, it's in programming mode. So let's just run that same tool past it again to see what the upgraded memory is doing. Uh, oh, fatal error. Okay. I'm going to check those. Um, I'll check those soldering connections and. Uh, maybe try a different chip. That's not good. Right, so I have reflowed that solder with the hot air gun uh, because you never know, there might have been a dodgy connection in there, um, unlikely, but we'll see how it goes. So I'll just run that again. So it's plugged in in programming mode. We have a connection. Oh, and <laughs> look at that. We have detected flash size four megabytes let's run the other program the arduino based one and see if we can also um, see the same thing around four megabytes around that'd be pretty cool worth the reflow all right so let's go back to this we'll change this again to 9600 uh, and we'll change this again to eight so it's not so frenetic and um, I'm just going to go, I think, with the standard flash size too. I'm not sure what difference that makes, but anyway, uh, we'll just compile that. In fact, what I should have done was press compile and load. But anyway, it is compiling fine. That's great. And now, is it loading? Yes. 
Uh, and look, auto detected flash size is four megabytes. So already pretty confident that we have hit that. And then what I might do is I might load something up that um, that hits that four megabytes of flash. In the meantime, uh, I'm just going to swap this over. It is now programmed. So I'm going to pull it out, swap it over to UART mode, plug it back in again, run the old serial monitor and see what gibberish comes out of it, if anything. There we go. Oh, that's nice. So 4194304. Yep, good. All right, now let's program it up with something interesting. All right, so now that we've got our 4 megabyte ESP01S, uh, let's build a web server on there. So I've just got an LED out, and I've got also an indicator of LED strength. And then it's pretty much um, straight code from a website, which I will link in the on the blog. And all it does is it creates a slider uh, on a web server. You go to the web server, you slide the value, and theoretically, your LED will then um, change, uh, you know, according to the strength that you've selected. In this case, between 0 and 255. All right, so let's um, upload it and uh, firstly see if it's going to be accepted by the uh, e the <laughs> the brain the, the big brain ESP01S so everything seems to be compiling okay good sign um might as well show the options while we've got them so you have 4 megabytes uh, a little bit of that to OTA and the rest is pretty standard. Here we are connecting. I've actually asked it to wipe all the flash, all the Wi-Fi information, everything, which takes about four and a half, five seconds. So there you go, auto detected four megabytes is good. Completely erase the chip in four and a half seconds. And then it is uh, in the process of uploading. And if that's successful, then we'll go to the web server and uh, see if we can see the slider and then play with the slider and see if that'll change the LED. And, uh, and then from there, I might actually um, maybe change the LED to a brighter light. And I do have uh, a project in mind to, uh, to change uh, the brightness of a, well, it's a lantern, really, uh, remotely. So um, useless, but interesting. All right, so that's the uh, final code that's been uploaded. It's all good. Let's go and check it out, see if it works. All right, once you've located your ESP8266 on the network, you should see something like this. And uh, I'll just overlay down here what's happening on the actual device itself. We're at zero at the moment, so we'll just bump that up. So that's uh, 40 out of the, the byte, which is 255. Uh, I'll go to about halfway. You'll see the brightness jump up. That's about 130. There's 190, and there's maxing out at uh, 250. I've actually set the increments to 10 and not five so i can't go any higher than that but you get the idea so uh, next thing to do i think is to connect up the output uh, that's coming to the led at the moment to a transistor and maybe make this a little bit brighter all right so we have 3.3 .3 volts coming in here to the esp 01s a little capacitor there to uh, give us a bit of boost when we want to connect to the interwebs uh, that web server is up and running. You can see that on the phone there with a local address. And uh, then we've got, instead of an LED coming out of that GPIO, I've just running a line here to a PC817. Uh, and then you can see that returning to ground on this side. On the other side of that optocoupler is a 15 volt circuit. And that's uh, coupled through this 10 ohm ridiculously large uh, 10 ohm 10 watt resistor actually and then through to this 3 watt led so the theory is that uh, when we move this slider along that led should start to go on so that it's on pretty low there's still no recording of the uh, of the wattage going through there uh, go a little bit higher starting to get a reading now about 0.14 watts coming through that uh, let's go about halfway there we go about 0.4 watts coming through there and then all the way through to the end here, about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 watts. Uh, so yeah, I would say that is the circuit working. I would like to um, maybe use this now. I've got an I've got an LED lantern which I'd like to uh, 
to pimp so that we can actually get to it via the internet. Uh, and uh, yeah, that should be a fun project. But we'll save that for another time. See you then.